The Chicago White Sox took two of three from the Oakland A's here on the south side of Chicago. Dylan Cease pitched another gem, and the Sox actually hit two home runs to beat the Athletics 4-1 to on Sunday afternoon. It is August, and the White Sox are one game above 502 games out in the AL Central. The trade deadline is fast approaching, and the last place Kansas City Royals are in town to battle Michael Kopech and the White Sox. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search Locked On White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by Vroom. Uh, With Vroom, you can buy a car entirely online and have it delivered straight to you so you never have to go to the dealership again. So next time you need to buy a car, just grab your phone and go to vroom.com and check out thousands of great cars. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk White Sox. Locked on White Sox is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Lots of important White Sox conversations to get to revolving the current state of the Sox and perhaps what's to come. It is an absolute pleasure to be joined by content creator for CHGO Sports, host of CHGO Bets, and CHGO White Sox, the former Locked On White Sox host. Welcome back, Sean Anderson. Howdy. What's up, Nick? Thank you for having me on, my man. I really appreciate you uh, letting me come back to my old stomping grounds. It's like, you know, when Smalls is in high school and he comes back and plays with the kids that have taken over the Sandlot and he just, you know, annihilates them. You know, it should, it should be a fun time. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, you, um, you know, you covered this team just as closely as anybody else. And it has been quite a year. I uh, want to talk about just kind of where your mentality has been at your emotions, uh, what, you know, we can possibly expect uh, for the dra- trade deadline and beyond. But, you know, our sacks are, are 51 and 50 here. It's the start of August. We've got 60 games left of the season, two games back in the central, and they're in an interesting spot. They can go several different directions and it wouldn't be like that if they were in a different division, right? It's the AL Central has allowed them to play this kind of this game. Uh, trade deadline is 5 p.m. Central Time, Tuesday, August 2nd. Uh, first question, really, and, and you know, there's uh, this is a tough one. You know, it's subjective, but you know, who should the Sox go after in your mind, uh, or what positions should they be targeting? Yeah, we did the MLB trade deadline special on Thursday on CHGO White Sox, Vinny Duber, Herb Lawrence and I, and we went through the top five needs. It's clear that this team needs bullpen help, obviously. Uh, Joe Kelly has been good in his last times out, but also uh, in, in one of his last times uh, out, uh, he had to leave the game because of a nerve issue that you know was bothering him in spring training and delayed the start of a season. Um, Kendall Graveman has been all right, but a little bit shaky. And Liam Hendricks was out for a significant period of time with a very concerning injury. Um, it has been an injury that he's been dealing with since 2008, but it seems like bullpen is definitely a spot uh, of need for the White Sox because even if Kelly, Graveman, and Hendricks are healthy for the rest of the year, I don't trust Jose Ruiz. I don't trust Matt Foster. I don't trust Tanner Banks. This team needs more bullpen help. Uh, And, you know, that would have been nice if Garrett Crochet was here. Uh, It would have been nice if Kyle Crick was healthy. I think that he was really finding something before he got injured. Vince Velasquez injured as well. I I think they just need more depth uh, relieving wise. I think that's the biggest need. And then you can really have questions about the position uh, because 
people think that this team is going to play up to the back of the baseball card. That's exactly what this team is telling you. That's what Tony Luce is saying. It's what Kendall Graveman's saying. It's what Liam Hendricks is saying. It's what all the hitters are saying that they will start performing at some point. They just have to keep grinding, right? I'm so sick of hearing about them grinding after 101 games. Uh, it's time to start winning. And it feels like that's coming around the corner here. They haven't lost a, or they only, they only lost one series in July. Um, and that was the, uh, the first series against Minnesota on July 4th, 5th and 6th. So, they're in a weird spot because fans don't believe in this team. I am going on Twitter by the moniker of being bitter because this team has made me bitter by the way that they played in April, May, uh, June, and even a little bit through July here. Um, so I think this team needs depth. And I, I do believe that this team feels that their stars are going to perform at some point. So if those stars are going to perform, this team still needs depth help. Um, you yeah. know, Leary Garcia isn't enough at, at this point. I'm done seeing Leary Garcia in a White Sox uniform. It's been 12 years, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I agree with you there. I would also say Gavin Sheets. I, I mm -hmm. completely understand what he did this weekend in Oakland. And I'm happy for him to do that maybe on a different team um, every day is a DH. Uh, I do not want to sacrifice the defense anymore. Is there a particular name out there? Uh, you know, I know boy, th there's been talk of uh, Jose Quintana coming back yeah. to the White Sox. But I agree with you with that relief situation, especially after the news with Ronaldo Lopez in the back. Mm -hmm. they, they, need, they need help. Uh, is there a particular name that you, know, you would like to see maybe the Sox try to bring in? Yeah, that was a name I forgot too, Reynaldo. So thank you for uh, reminding me yeah. of that one as well. Um, he's going to be out until about August 9th. So the White Sox just lost the, probably their, one of their better high leverage guys or more consistent high leverage guys this year um, for 15 days now. I think, you know, you talk about defense. It just feels like they need left-handed hitting. And I, I would like an upgrade over Gavin Sheets. I don't think you're going to get a defensive upgrade with this player over Gavin Sheets, uh, but he's at least played more outfield, and that's Jock Peterson. Uh, it really feels like the Giants are going to be sellers. Uh, they're dominating the Cubs right now, but I, I really don't think that this team, especially with the Padres ahead of them, who seem to be uh, in line with Soto Talks, uh, the Dodgers clearly ahead of them, it feels like the Giants are probably going to pull back and reassess because the 107 uh, win season last year was an anomaly. So I think Jock Peterson would be a name I like to see. Again, the White Sox clearly don't seem to care about defense. They don't really seem to care about base running. So at this point, if you need to out slug teams, you need to go get sluggers. This is Jack Peterson, who's hitting basically about 20 home runs in San Francisco. We know how tough it is for them to find left-handed power hitters. The last guy doing uh, numbers like this was literally like Barry Bonds. Like they have struggled to find hitting uh, in that park. And Jack Peterson's provided that. So this is a name that's been connected to the White Sox before. They almost offered him a contract in 2020 before uh, bringing, or 2021 before bringing in Adam Eaton. So I think the franchise likes him. He's performing well. He's on a one-year deal. They're sellers. I think it adds up a lot but also i didn't hear them connected to naquin i didn't hear them connected to peralta i don't know who they're interested in the white Sox love to work undercover so i'm saying jock i think that they'll look to add a left-hander bat left-handed bat but it really feels like they haven't been in on it yet so i i am also preparing for disappointment nick <laughs> yeah no that that's a that's the white Sox way i get i get i completely get it sean uh yeah, the Sox uh, are not playing well at home. They're not hitting home runs. It, nobody can really figure that out. So uh, that needs to be addressed. Uh, I know the Sox are often compared to the Atlanta Braves of last year of like, look where the Braves were at. And they all mm -hmm. of a sudden uh, took over. But you have to pay attention to the moves that they made at the deadline. They did it correctly and they got production out of those moves. One of them was Jack Peterson. Um I know it's uh, weird to even talk the Sox as sellers, but uh, are there names on the short list that are absolutely untouchable on this Sox team? We are not moving these guys uh, for anything. I would put Andrew Vaughn in that list. I'd put Dylan Cease in that list. I know people want to connect Andrew Vaughn to a Juan Soto trade. I don't think that's going to happen. I know that they've talked about being in on the big names, but it just seems like too high of a price tag for this team, especially with the unknowns of, you know, adding Juan Soto, but getting rid of, you know, Andrew Vaughn, does that actually help your team? Um, so I, I understand people getting into the seller discussion and I understand why they are in that discussion as well, because the White Sox haven't given them a reason to get out of it, right? They haven't played better and they haven't gone out and acquired players. Um, even with Atlanta, Atlanta knew that they were going to be buyers. They went out and got Jock Peterson on July 15th. It's July 31st right now, Nick. Um, it's going to be August 1st tomorrow when you post this. So it, it is 
difficult to be like, ah, the White Sox aren't going to be sellers, but they're also not buying. So I think Vaughn and Cease, they're young enough. They have enough control where it would be pretty stupid to get rid of them. But if someone wants to take Yasmani Grandal's contract, I, I might have to listen to it. If someone wants to take Johnny Cueto and would give you two decent prospects, I, I don't think you hang up the phone. Um, but outside of that, I, I mean... I really find it difficult for them to be sellers. I, I would yeah. say maybe they move on from Pollock. Maybe they move on from Cueto, but I could see that really being the only place that they dabble in selling. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, with two months still to play, why should we still believe in this White Sox team that has taken us on an epic roller coaster ride? We are going to examine our fandom and tell you why there is hope. Uh, more on that in a moment. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who do you like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen every day. The MLB trade deadline is August 2nd, and Lockdown MLB has all the breakdowns. Lockdown White Sox will have rapid reactions to any move made. Make sure you have subscribed to Lockdown White Sox on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get notified when each episode premieres. So the White Sox just won two of three from Oakland. Uh, they're two games back in the AL Central, two and a half games back of the wild card. Um, and, you know, I, you and I are on this roller coaster. We're covering the White Sox so closely each and every day. I have talked about how my mood shifts, you know, sometimes at bat to at bat, inning to inning. It's a problem, I know, but that's just how I'm wired. When Aloy um, hit that homer today, <laughs> oh, I mean, the the profanities that came out of yeah. my mouth, Nick. I mean, yeah. elation, frustration, yeah. all let out with one swing and, and, yeah. and just a, a slurry of swears. So wh what I would like to ask you is, you know, how has it been covering this team so closely? I mean, where is your fandom been at and, and maybe the stages that it's gone through so far? Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting question um, because I've tried to figure out like Herb gets pretty amped up. Like I, I, I was going to, I promise people if they, they lost to the Oakland today, I would have said every swear word I knew on the <laughs> post game uh, show today, but it didn't happen. They were able to win. But even that, I mean, you said, you know, they win two out of three against Oakland and it just doesn't feel like it. Um, the fact that the White Sox didn't lose a series or one, one again, only lost one series in July. All everyone's like, well, there's still only one game above 500. So like, it, it is really tough to figure out how I feel about this team because they haven't given me either way to, to feel again, it's kind of going back to the buyers or sellers thing. And I look all the way back to May of 2021, where I did not want Tony La Russa to be the manager of this team. He did not know the rules. He put Liam Hendricks out as a base runner in Cincinnati. And then there was uh, in the New York series that year, um, he did the same thing on the Friday game and the Sunday game where the way he managed the ninth inning, it just felt like, all right, what is this guy doing? Like, I don't, I don't think he is truly, uh, the baseball mind that we were promised. And I still don't feel that way. I, I feel, and you could even see just the way that people have come off the Tony uh, remarks. I mean, being on White Sox Twitter, it was horrible mm -hmm. last year because oh, there yeah. were so many Tony La Russa defenders. That's not there anymore. And I think the main part is just because he's proven that he was the wrong hire. Um, I know that it's really tough to say managers matter. I've found it tough to believe, but I really think that the culture changed for the worse when he stepped in. And I really think that I've been detached from this team 
since May of 2021. It's been easy to cover them. It's been great to cover them. It's been, you know, interesting to watch this team develop. But as a fan, I really think that my, you know, living on every single pitch has been taken out of it just because they can do everything right in the game. And it still comes down to this guy. Um, and, you know, I look back at the 12 game stretch that Dylan Cease is on right now, where he's only allowed four on runs and the two losses that he has in that stretch. One of them was a two to one loss against the Tigers where the White Sox faced a right-handed hitter or right-handed pitcher. So obviously there's frustrations there uh, where the, the Sox couldn't score for Dylan Cease. And the other one was the June 9th game where he ends up uh, giving the intentional pass to Trey Turner, letting Max Muncy come up and hitting that home run. And, I, I look back at that day as the other day where it's just like, this proves you that you just made a year long mistake that you didn't get rid of this guy. And I think that maybe the team would just be a little bit more energized if he wasn't the presence that's there. Um, and I know that's a lot of what ifs you're going back, yeah. uh, you know, hundreds of games at this point to figure out if that's the truth or not, but I, I, you got to look at what's changed. Kenny mm -hmm. didn't change. Rick didn't change. The first base coach didn't change. The third base coach didn't change. The owner didn't change. Most of the players didn't change. It's mainly the manager. And I, I don't like to be the manager's the matter. The manager's the problem. The manager's the problem. But I feel like this wouldn't be a 51 and 50 team if he wasn't the manager. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Uh, the, the word culture you, you brought up, and uh, it's something that I've talked with, you know, other Sox, Sox fans and, and, and just – people, you know, in my family that, you know, follow this team so closely, it's, there's this something you can't put your finger on. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it's been there. Uh, I, you know, in terms of play, I get so frustrated with the lack of, you know, living up to the potential, the back of the baseball card, as you had mentioned. And, um, but I do, you know, I, I see hope and the, the Aloy Jimenez moments this weekend mm -hmm. bring me hope and the Andrew Vaughn, uh, where have you, you know, and this might change, you know, game to game or series to series. Where do you see the hope moving forward for this season? Yeah, it definitely changes pitch by pitch. Uh, I mean, like at, at this point, it, it really is, you know, we're, we're, we're all looking for that sign of, of spark, uh, right? We're all looking for that run that we believe that this team can go on. And I, I mean, I, my hope is basically just that it will happen at, at some point. I mean, Sox fans are looking for that big trade. Luis Castillo is now off the board, but they don't have the prospect talent to go out and get them. The Mariners just traded a top 20 prospect and a top 100 prospect, a part of that deal to go get him and their number fifth prospect. The White Sox have one guy in the top 100, that's Colson Montgomery, that even would be you know similar value. The White Sox just don't have the pedigree of players that Seattle just traded to get that top end starter. Um, so that's why Soto or, or, or some of these big changers, it's just, it, it really feels difficult for you know an actual change to happen that's why i thought tony would be that change that happens um where you're really just waiting for people to wake up and that could happen at any moment i mean that could happen right now and we, it could just be happening on saturday a, a very low win on saturday a very low win on sunday but that could be the start of something special I, i'm not sure um yeah it feels like it was a good july and yeah i said winning is going to help things they've been winning more so it, we might be in the midst of it. It might have already started happening. We might be talking about a two-game win streak that turns into a 10-game win streak. It doesn't feel that way right now because we've seen this team do this before. I mean, their largest, largest longest win streak this year is six wins. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't see them winning six games. You look at the Royals uh, matchup that they're coming up against. They're going up against two righties. And do you trust Kopech, Giolito, and Lynn to give you the starts that you need in those three games? And you haven't seen that. So I, I really have difficulty putting faith and hope into this team that something's going to turn around they got to prove it to me and they haven't done that right um so that leads me to this this we'll we'll, we'll do this and then we'll we'll get into a, an, another segment um devil's advocate really if the Sox can't get into a conversation of uh, yankees and houston being in the elite in the al then what is the point why not just mm -hmm. stay put and if you win with this club you win with them and you know, 2023, we're gonna have we're gonna have a pretty good club as well. Yeah, I I mean, I thought they were having gonna have a pretty good club in 2022. And it's not like the 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 opponents have been difficult. Again, they have one of the easiest schedules in Major League Baseball. If they were in the AL East, they'd be in fifth place. Uh, the fact that they're even in third place, two games back, is shocking, and it just speaks to how bad the division is. So I understand the point of you know. To play devil's advocate, you know, why would you blow this up? I agree. Why would you blow this up? Um, 
I think the reason that they wouldn't blow this up is because Rick Hahn doesn't want to admit he's wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, th- th- it feels the same reason why they wouldn't entertain going out and getting Carlos Rodon because that means Rick Hahn was wrong. Um, you know, some of the other guys that they, they've been connected to, it, it really doesn't feel, I mean, like he's not wrong about Quintana. They won that Quintana trade so he can go out and acquire them. Um, but I, I feel like, a lot of this is Rick Hahn proving his worth as a general manager. He he needs Aloy and Luis to hit because he signed them before they even played a major league game, yeah. right? And and they haven't been hitting. They haven't been those stars that we were promised. The only guy that's living up to the, the baseball card right now is Jose Abreu. But even Yasmani <laughs> yeah. Grandal, like Grandal, his big free agent signing, been pretty rocky, especially yeah. this year. Um, Hendricks has been a great signing, but I, I really do feel part of this is he doesn't want to admit he's wrong. He doesn't want to say, you know, this rebuild that I promised, you know, ask me when the parade is here. Mm. He doesn't want you to ask because I don't think that parade's coming. And yeah. you're really in a rock and a hard place. He needs these guys to start performing because if not, he's losing his job. Yeah. Uh, well, the last place Kansas City Royals are in town and Michael Kopech is on the hill. We're going to tell you what to expect as this series kicks off tonight. Uh, more on that in a moment. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in-game betting scores and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Sox, uh, you know, they have not played well at home. They have not hit the home runs, but here you got Kansas City coming in, last place in the AL Central, 40 and 62. You've got Michael Kopek on the hill. Um I, he's a curious case to me. Um, if the Sox go ahead and if they do get Jose Quintana or they do bring in a starter, do you say to Mike, Michael Kopech, you know what, we're going to move you with the Lopez injury and everything. We're going to move you back to the bullpen. Uh, we're watching you a little too closely as is. We have brought this guy in. He's going to carry the load the rest of the season. You're going to be more in the uh, in the reliever situation. I think they would need somebody with more cachet than Quintana. Quintana feels like a guy that can easily just become a swingman uh, in, in a bullpen spot. You're starting for Pittsburgh. They're one of the worst teams in the major leagues. And last year, he ended up uh, tagging into uh, San Francisco bullpen. Uh, and, and he wasn't great in that spot. But I feel like if they were to acquire him, uh, it, it would be in a swingman role. But I don't know. I honestly feel like the Pirates are going to screw this up. I, I feel like they're either going to... <laughs> Uh, wait too long and not get the right price for him and, and you know ask too much like they're clearly overvaluing a guy who has a two million dollar contract for one year they should have gotten rid of him like uh, they're, they're overthinking this at this point I, I heard a report that he wasn't going to make his start on Friday it's Sunday and he's still on the team so I, I do think that if Kopech was to be knocked out of the rotation it would be somebody who has to have a little bit more of a resume right it, it needs to be somebody who I mean, I clearly has better numbers than Michael Kopech. Kopech has pretty good numbers. Uh, yeah. there, there are concerns about it breaking down uh, and his arm not having the full ability to go. Um, he's at 1,400 pitches this year, nearing in on 1,500 pitches, uh, nearing in on 100 innings pitch. So I understand why they would be watching him, but it really feels like they need to make a significant addition to knock him out of the rotation because – Everything that's coming out of this organization from Rick Hahn to Ethan Katz is, no, we're not moving him out of the bullpen. We'd be crazy to. So it feels like they're sticking with their guy. It is because, you know, obviously that's the plan right now. They might be, you know, looking to acquire a, a starter while we're talking. But I would be pretty shocked that if on August 4th, Kopech was out of the rotation or if, you know, on August 1st, this is his last start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, me too. Uh I, uh, I like you said, I Castillo maybe, but the Sox didn't have the assets and they just couldn't right. pull uh, that one off. Uh, a lot is made uh, of the lineups. I'm someone at fault that will criticize lineups constantly, and there's been a lot to critique. Uh, do you have an everyday lineup? Would you like to see something consistently, uh, whether it's batting order or just the folks that are out there at different positions? Is there something that you, you know, you want to see on, on a regular basis? 
Yeah, I think that we've kind of seen a little bit more consistency, especially with the lineup since about June 9th. There was a report, I think, from Mike Rodriguez of uh, Univision who said that the analytics department is taking over some more of the day-to-day stuff from Tony La Russa. And it feels like that was around the moment where that clicked in, that you started seeing Anderson at one, then either Vaughn or Moncada at two. Then now we're seeing AJ Pollock, which I hate. Um, but Robert, <laughs> when he was healthy at three, Abreu yeah. at four, and then Grandal at five, I think they have the right setup right now. It's just all about guys returning. Um, you know, if Robert comes back, I think it'd be very easy to go. Anderson at one, uh, at two, when they're facing a righty, have Moncada be that second hitter when they're facing a lefty, have it be Andrew Vaughn at three, Luis Robert when he's healthy, Abreu at four, Grandal at five, Jimenez at six figure out either Vaughn or Makata there and then Harrison and Zavala, right? Um, if, if that's the DH for the day. Um, but I, I do think that it's it's pretty much looking like how it, how it will look for the rest of the year. And maybe you keep Harrison in that nine hole, but I think probably one through six and one through seven really is, is figured out for the Sox when they're healthy. Yeah. Uh, part of me last year, uh, towards the end of that season, I, I just wanted to see some consistent lineups, guys not getting mm-hmm. breathers, just guys playing on a regular basis, uh, th- them feeling comfortable, of them walking into the building, knowing exactly where they were going to hit, who was going to be in front of them, behind them, and what position for just you know a couple weeks stretch. And I just don't feel that that happened. And, and maybe it's because they had such a comfortable lead, and, and that's going to be different, I believe, uh, this year. Um, before we, we say goodbye, and I, and I hope we, we talk again before the season's over, I, I got to ask for predictions, uh, not necessarily trade deadline, but where do you see this White Sox team finishing this season? Yeah, I think that they're going to win the AL Central. I think it'd be really pessimistic of me to say that they wouldn't. You look at Minnesota and they are truly crumbling, collapsing. They have no starting pitching. They have no bullpen. They are not going to be able to finish this marathon. They had a great start, a great jump. They pulled the hamstring like Herb did uh, at mile, uh, you know, 14, <laughs> oh, four, four, 14, 14.2. Oh. Uh, so th- that, that sucks to see for the twins. I really don't see them as a threat. And you look at the guardians, they're talking about trading Zach, please like the white Sox need to win this division. Nick, it's the yeah. only option. I feel like for pay, I don't know why white Sox fans need to pay for something apparently. Um, but I feel like the pain that we're going to have to pay for is going to be the last nine games of the season. Six of them are against Minnesota that has to determine the division, right? This team, of course, we're going to say, oh, they have the easiest schedule. They're going to pull away at some point. They're going to match up to the back of the baseball card. They're going to put us in as much paint as possible this year. And it's going to come down to those last nine games, six against Minnesota, three against San Diego. We'll see what happens. I think that they will win the division. I said that they're going to take over first place at least by August 12th. Um, okay. You look at Minnesota, the fact that the White Sox are two back right now. They do play Detroit uh, in, in this next series, right? That should be difficult. But then they go and play Toronto for four games. Then they have two against Los Angeles. I think that could be a six-game losing streak right there for the Twins. I think they could easily fall to third place. It's just really now between the White Sox and the Guardians. Can the Guardians take care of business against Arizona? And can the White Sox take care of business against Kansas City in this next game, uh, next series? That's going to be something to watch for. And then after the White Sox have the easier matchup, Cleveland faces Houston. This is one of, if not the best team in the American League. The White Sox should be able to pull ahead of Cleveland while they go to Houston for four games. Uh, again, again, we've been saying, you know, they should have taken care of uh, Colorado. They should have been able to take care of uh, uh, Cleveland. But the White Sox next three series, Kansas City, Texas, Kansas City. Mm. They, they should be able to take control of the division at this point, especially with Cleveland going up against Houston and Minnesota going up against the Dodgers and Toronto. Yeah. Um, I keep my antacids close by my Tums, <laughs> my Pepto-Bismol, Sean, as I'm sure you, you find your, your ways Xanax. as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, buddy, it has been a pleasure, uh, talking with you and catching up. Please tell us where we can find all of your amazing work now. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. And you can follow the uh, CHGO White Sox show at CHGO underscore White Sox. And we're on every single podcasting platform out there, Spotify, iTunes, uh, you know, Stitcher, all the good ones. Uh, you could check us out there. You could also check us out at allchgo.com. We have a YouTube channel, CHGO Sports. Thanks for having me on, Nick. I really appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Sean, I love talking White Sox with you. And, and I really, it's a, it's a pleasure reconnecting with you. So thank you uh, so much. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll talk again. And uh, hopefully it's because it's a, an AL Central championship. Hopefully. And I got 30 minutes of mustache time. So I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilled <laughs> for the day. Thank you for uh, blessing me with that presence. <laughs> you got it, buddy. All right. Go Sox, my go man. Go Sox. Folks, thank you so much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast. We are on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Lockdown Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. Now make your second listen, the Lockdown MLB podcast with MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan. Uh, brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Find the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, coming up on the next episode, I'll recap Michael Kopech's outing and hopefully I'll be talking about a White Sox winner. Appreciate you making time for the Locked on White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox!